What if I told you in one year I saved over 306 hours of editing time? That is almost 13 days. That's a two week vacation back for you. What's up? I'm B Figgy. I'm a professional filmmaker and I spent five seasons as a video producer with the Lakers and I've been around some of the most talented editors in the world. The best pro editors edit fast and efficiently and this leaves them so much more time for creative decisions. But how do they do this? I did this by mastering a few powerful shortcuts that I'm gonna show you today. After years of testing and refining my process, I found a system that changed the way I edit forever. We are going to be assuming that this editor is going to make 300 projects a year. That's how we're going to calculate all of these numbers. The first thing I want to talk about is templatizing your Premiere file. This is going to save you so much time and I'm just going to show you on my screen here. I have a template already created. I have my exports, I have my media, I have my Premiere file. In this Premiere file, this is actually the video we're going to be making today. This is the Day 1K Party Vlog, but I've made it a template. So if I just click on it and I open it up, everything is already going to be ready to rock and roll. I'm not going to have to make my new bins. If I go over here to the project file, you'll see I have my assets, I have my media, I have my sequences, and my color profile LUT is already imported onto the adjustment layer. So we're not messing around. As soon as I bring the footage in here, I am ready to rock and roll. So the first thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to go to the B Figgy T9 drive. I'm going to go to YouTube because we're super dialed on this channel. Day 1K party at Jack's house. And I'm going to drag in all this content into the media folder. We're ready to rock and roll. I can immediately drag it under my adjustment layer. And this footage now has color on top of it because we've already set up our file. And that alone, if you do 300 of these, that will save you so many hours per year. Think about having to type the template. Think about having to create your bins. Think about how to put your LUT on. That's done. You'll never have to do it again. On average, that took me a minute and 30 seconds to create all my folders, open up Premiere and rename everything. That's one work day. You just got it back. Number two is going to be markers. Now you're like, I know how to use markers, but maybe you don't know how to use them like this. So let's say you're working on a team project and as you get further on in your career, you might be working with another editor, maybe in a different state. You might be tag teaming a project together. So let's say I'm editing this and I'm pulling selects. I'm gonna go on my screen. I love this specific clip right here. I'm gonna put an M. I'm gonna go in and double click the M and I'm gonna leave a note. I'm gonna say, we're at the beach. This is a great shot. Love it. <laughs> I'm gonna press OK. So now what I can do is I can actually double click on it and I can change the duration of it to be like 10 seconds. So now this shot can be dragged out and I can drag this marker out for the entirety of the clip. And if I was sending this to someone else to put the finishing touches on, they can see where I've left markers on certain clips. Now, a rookie is going to be doing something like this. Yeah, so did you get that project file? I need you to go, oh, I don't even know where it's at. I need you to go to 12 minutes and like 30 seconds or something. And do you see that one clip at the beach? I know there's like 97 clips at the beach, but there's this one shot where I'm on the sand. And if you can pull that one and put that in the edit, that would be fantastic. Do you see how much time we are saving by being able to type in the markers? We worked on a huge campaign with Adobe this year, and we were needing to communicate with another editor in a different place. And this made it so easy to type in the markers of shots that I thought were the best selects. That other person was editing. And when we were sending this off to VFX, I was able to type in notes for them. So then we're basically communicating not only over email, but also over the project. And it just makes everything so seamless. So this is something great to add into your workflow. If you might have another editor in another state and you're working on the same project together. And let's say we were doing this the rookie way and we're having a five minute phone call. Maybe I'm checking in to ask about what we're having for dinner. We're wasting about five minutes on average for every time we do that. Let's say we work on 300 projects a year. That is about 25 hours that we're saving by just implementing the markers into our process. Right now we're at 32 and a half hours saved. We got to get those numbers up. Let's get into this next tip. Tip number three is going to be constant power. Now this is an audio transition. And a lot of the times if you're seeing a podcast or you're seeing two clips next to one another, if you're not hearing like a pop, there's a chance that the editor put in constant power. And typically the hotkey for constant power is command shift D. And so if you zoom in here on the audio, it puts a little transition on the these clips and I can drag it out so the audio kind of fades into one another. But Command Shift D, that's a lot of buttons. I don't want to be pressing three different buttons. And so what you can actually do, if you go into Premiere Pro and you go to keyboard shortcuts, the transition for constant power is apply audio transition. So if I look up apply audio transition, it's right there, Command Shift D. I changed it to be the semicolon. 
Also, all you have to do to change any of these things in Premiere and Final Cut, DaVinci Resolve, whatever, you can apply this to any software. All you gotta do is click it, drag it, and drop it on a key, and then you just press OK, and then you're set up. But if I go in between these two clips right here and I wanna add constant power, it's one button, instantaneous, boom. You see that? I use constant power so much, it's not even funny. And when someone told me that I could change this to be just one button, it kinda changed my life. On average, per project, that little shortcut is gonna save me about 6.25 minutes. If we do that times 300 projects in the year, my number is 31.25 hours. We are cooking right now, ladies and gentlemen. The next tip is Q and W for cutting the heads and cutting the tails. Now, if I didn't use Q and W, Let's look at how boring this would be. So I go over here, I press the razor tool. Let's say I don't like this portion of the clip. I go back here, I press the selection tool. I delete. I go over here, I scrub more. I don't like this part of it. Now we go back, we have razor tool. We cut, we go back, we get the cursor. Oh my God, that was like watching grass grow. That is absolutely terrible. This is what you're going to do if you don't implement these already. Q and W is huge. Now I am a fan of not moving my hand on the keyboard. I like it to stay in one place, except for Q and W. That's the only real hotkey that's over on the left side of my keyboard. Because usually when I'm doing Q and W, it's like a very specific thing. I'm not messing around with a bunch of other stuff. I'm purely just chopping the head of the clip and the tail of the clip and making sure I have the exact selection that I want. So let's press Command Z a few times. And now if I go right here and let's say I want to start it right here, I just press Q, boom, done, instantaneous. And I'm like, okay, we're done, W. You see how easy that is? That is instantaneous and we are all about saving time here at the 505 Pod. We're at 92.55, we gotta get into that 100 club. So our next one is going to be unlink. And you're like, yo, Fig, you can just click this other thing that unlinks the selection, now they're all unlinked. I don't wanna always unlink all of them. I like them all to stay linked up with the audio so I can drag them around and stuff. The old fashioned way to do this is to right click and you scroll down to unlink, maybe you mess up, you go label, and you go back to our unlink. Now we just unlink the project. That takes way too much time. Shout out to the 505 podcast editor for YouTube, Nick, because he is the one who came up with this shortcut. I didn't know that this was possible. So for 10 years, I've just been wasting days and days and days of time. I owe him a Venmo request because of this. To change that, we're going to go to keyboard shortcut. And the reason why I couldn't find this is because it's not unlink, it's called link. So if I search link, it's right there. Where did it go? Right there. And you drag that onto the letter U, unlink. That's how I think about it. So now if I just click this, boom, U, instantaneous. We're saving more time. Just utilizing unlink will save you about 25 hours a year. Because if you sit this and then maybe you go down and maybe we actually like necessary, we have to command Z that, I go back, then I press unlink. That's about five seconds of time. 117.55 now. We are not in the rookie hours anymore. We're saving days. I've seen a lot of people mess this up. This one is crazy. This is the slip tool. Now what I've seen people do is they bring up the clip, maybe they gotta go and link it, you still slow this, they drag it over the part they actually want, and they drag this back, drag this over, and now they drag it down. Oh my gosh, it's so, so slow. Instead, what you can do, you're gonna click Y, which is the slip tool for me, and by default, you can find it over here. So if I go over here, I can just drag to the left a different starting point for the clip, and then I let it go, and now it's starting at a completely different point or I can grab it and do the same thing the opposite direction. Now I could start it where I'm already on the court. So now if I go over here, I'm already walking out onto the court. That's going to save you so much time instead of dragging it up, unlink, scooting it over. Can you imagine what your life was like before this video and before you implemented these insane shortcuts? All you gotta do is press Y and drag your mouse to the left or to the right to change where the clip starts or where the clip ends. This will save you per year about 15 hours if you're editing 300 projects. Lucky number seven, we got J, K, and L. Okay, this is how you're gonna edit twice as fast. So let's say I'm going through this video here and I wanna just go in double time. But beforehand, you're just scrubbing like this, not the way to do it. We're gonna press L once, that's regular speed. If I press it twice, now we're in 2X speed. If I press it three times, we are in 3X speed. If I wanna pause it, I just press K. Maybe I wanna go backwards, J. I wanna go backwards in 2X, double J. And if I wanna go backwards in 3X, triple J, and I can pause it with K and I can go back forward. This is fantastic because if I'm using Q and W with J, K and L, I'm like, okay, cool, I'm done. Let's keep going. Boom, I'm gonna go fast and double. She's not doing anything. I'm gonna cut it there, Q. Boom, Chloe hits it, W, we're done. We're on to the next thing. 
that is how you implement this into your workflow and you are going to be cooking in lightning fast speed if you implement those top seven this is going to save you 85 hours where do we get that if you're editing a podcast you're also editing social clips like i was that's going to save you 85 hours you're welcome rock let's go we are over 200 hours saved at this point you're going to cabo one way right now at this moment the next one that we're going to look into is edit undo and and redo and you're like yo i know command z we're not doing commands anymore we're doing one singular button when i'm editing on my desktop i use a gaming mouse and my hand really never leaves the right side of the keyboard so my hand hangs out on the plus and the minus so i can minimize and maximize the screen so i can go like this you see that that's why my plus and minus zero i have changed to add edit so my add edit is now just zero my edit undo and redo are huge because since my hand isn't leaving this right side I have changed the little brackets to be edit undo and edit redo. So instead of going all the way over here, command Z, going all the way back, going up here, edit redo. No, we're not doing that. We're just using two little things, and I'm gonna like cut this, for example. Up, oh, edit undo. Oh, I want to redo it. Edit redo. I can redo it. That's gonna save you 42 hours. Think about how many times you're pressing command Z, how many times you're trying to redo it, and maybe you pop up to file, and you, maybe, maybe pop up to edit instead of redo undo. And now we're doing the whole thing all over again. Not efficient. We're about efficiency at the 505 pod. So change edit undo and edit redo to be two keys on your laptop or on your computer where your hand is going to stick on your board. 259.55 hours and we're getting to 306 today. So let's say we're getting real tedious here and I want to go over five frames. Many of you might just say, oh, we're just going to go over one, two, three, four, five. Oh my gosh like a snail walking across the street in slow motion at 1000 frames per second. Never again. Instead, we are going to go over here to the beginning. All I'm going to do is press shift arrow over five frames. I want to go over 15 frames. One, two. Now we're at 15 frames, 20 frames. Boom. Shift arrow will go over five frames either in the left direction or in the right direction and that makes the tedious editing a lot less annoying and just with those arrows you're going to save 12 and a half hours no more guessing no more shooting over the arrow five times never again shift arrow over right arrow over left five frames on the dot every single time and number 10 to wrap us up let's say that i wanted to switch to clip number 29 and clip number 30. some of you might go down like this you scroll over you bring this one over you drag this other clip down oh my gosh oh now it doesn't want to work properly that's fantastic scroll down we just finished oh my gosh never again instead what you're going to do is you're going to click clip 29 now let's say i want them to switch spots all i'm going to do is press command option and i'm going to drag it and these two clips are gonna just switch spots. Is that not absolutely insane? And to cap us off, that puts us at 305.3. The next tip is going to shoot us off into the stratosphere for time because this one is going to save you 50 hours. Now, I'm not paid by these guys, but this one does cost a little bit of money. This is investing in a gaming mouse. I have a Logitech G703 Lightspeed mouse. It's $70, it's actually on sale right now. I'll link it down below. But this mouse has little buttons on it. This mouse for me is copy and this is paste. And so using that, my thumb is right here and I'm just shake and bake, one, two, not even moving. I can also make this thing so freakishly fast. It's like I gave it 10 yerba mates and it slurped it up and it puts this poor trackpad to shame. I heavily recommend investing in this. That's gonna get us to over 350 hours saved per year if you implement these easy shortcuts right now into your workflow. Thank you so much for tuning into this video from the 505 Podcast. If you're still here, please check the description for my keyboard shortcuts and double check our math. Nick went to Harvard, so hopefully we are both correct. And as always, DM us on IG with any questions. Sub to the channel, drop us a comment. We'll see you all next week. Peace.